When talking about the WCF message object, I mentioned that they are based on XML. That's usually not a problem, but when we're dealing with web endpoints, there are multiple formats supported out of the box which can be used, including JSON, which we're setting here. So, if we use a simple inspector, like the one we did on the demo for endpoint behaviors that just prints out the message, the incoming message here, let's see what we get when we run it. Yes, XML. Since really everything in the WCF message is XML, that's what we get. So if we want to print out in different formats, we need to have a mapping between that format and XML. For JSON, WCF actually implement, implements a JSON to XML mapping, which is what was shown there. So let's see how we can print out the actual message that was received. Let's create a hel helper method to convert our message into the appropriate string for tracing. And let's help do this. The first thing we can do is, so if the message doesn't have anything, we'll just return the empty string so we don't have to deal with this case. Now what we need to do is, what is the format that the message arrived? For a message which are decoded by the web HTTP binding, which is what is used for web endpoints, there's a property that tells exactly that the web body format message property. So let's see if the request has that. If it has, we can get the format for that. Cast into the appropriate type, get the property, and now we know the format that the message was received. So let's switch over that. In case the default would just treat as XML, so because we didn't have any information and everything is XML, so that it can be printed that. For raw messages, uh, we would just deal with it separate later. So let's uh, write the message into a, a local stream that we can be used for printing. As I mentioned, WCF has a, a JSON to XML mapping, which is implemented as a dictionary writer. So for both the XML case and the JSON case, we can use that XML writer, which writes JSON, to do the message. For all, we'll just return with that, we'll deal with that later. Let's just create an, another method to do that. Make sure that the parameter name is correct. Okay, and take this line. Now we know the format. We wrote the message. We now we're gonna have a writer that implements that format. So we write the message there, and we flush the writer so that the information is written to the stream. And now we have in the memory stream the message. Both the text writer and the JSON writer use UTF-8 as a default encoding. So by just converting that, oh, we need to initialize the writer here. Very good. We already have that. However, we already we consumed the message. So remember that the message can only be used once. So we need to recreate the message. All the message format is in the memory stream. So we can just rewind the memory stream and create the appropriate reader for the message. Just like we have a writer, we also have a reader that can understand JSON and expose that as XML. And with the reader, we can use one of the overloads of create message. The one that takes the whole message envelope here. Or a reader for the whole envelope. In the original version, and now we have a new message that we can return. We also need to copy the properties from the original message because the, the rest of the code we also need to know, for example, what which format the method was encoded at. And now we have we just replaced the original one, and this method is done. Let's see how we can deal with the raw messages. WCF encodes those kinds of messages. We, in using one XML element called binary and everything else is just in all the bytes 
of the request body, they're written as a base64 encoding, just as a binary, essentially. Inside, uh, under this uh, binary element. So by just reading the, that binary element and then reading the content as binary, now we have the request body. For simplicity, let's assume that the message, that the input was encoded as UTF-8 as well. I mean, in the general case, we would need to do to get this information from somewhere. Now, again, we have the message. Just like on the other case, we need to recreate the message as well. So we get the memory stream, get the writer. We can use a binary writer in this example since we're going to be reading that message again. So we write the binary. We write the content, which is the body of the incoming request. We close the binary element, flush the writer, rewind the memory stream. Now we have to create a reader over that. Since we use the binary writer, we, we're going to need to use a binary reader here as well. And then we can copy the same code that we did to recreate the message. And changing the parameter name, we get that. Okay, now everything's done. Let's run that the code to see how it goes. So see, we now have the proper format for the code. And we can keep sending the requests, and we get everything. See, even now, when we send a request as XML, we actually, we, since we got the format for the request, we display that as XML. So that was the request that was sent here. The format property gives exactly how we, how we had. Now let's make it more inter interesting. Instead of this, inspe this inspector just prints out the incoming message, let's print out the outgoing message as well. But let's not do it here. Let's return the request, uh, the string for the request I have to the that method, and that value is going to be passed as a correlation state in the before send reply. This is interesting because if you have multiple operations, so the inspector is going to be called many times, and if one operation takes longer and the other takes shorter, you might have the request being printed out for one, the request for the other one, and then the reply. So those those the two information can be interleaved. By printing everything on the reply, we can not guarantee, but it's safer to assume that the they will be printed out. So see, we have the reply, and that reply is actually encoded in JSON, since that's the default outgoing message we use here. And even for messages, there are the raw messages. So this is being returned as text, text, not XML or JSON. We use raw. And see also for our XML message, the reply is being printed out as JSON as well. So that's it for message inspectors for now.